What's up guys, it's your boy Jordan, back with another video. In this video, I have a special guest. My boy Vince came through and we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different things. He's gonna be sharing with you guys a little bit of his backstory, uh, where he came from and how he's gotten to the level that he's at now. He's also gonna share some advice for you guys who are interested in pursuing your own e-com businesses and we're just gonna have a good conversation. So, my boy, what's up? What's How you up? feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. Yeah. So excited to be here. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome, man. So, if you guys uh, didn't know, Vince is actually working on building his own YouTube channel out as well. So, you can click the link down below. I'll put it right at the top. You can see his channel. Uh, for all you guys who like cars, Vince is the guy. My boy actually <laughs> just picked up a. You can tell them. Uh, I just <laughs> Just picked up a Lambo, uh, the Gallardo Spider. So. Yeah, I'll throw up a picture so you guys can see <laughs> that. This guy has my dream car. He's absolutely crushing it. So anyways, enough about that. Um, I want you to kind of tell the people a little bit about your backstory, kind of where you come from and you know your entrepreneurial history because I think some people would get some value out of that. Yeah, for sure. So um, since most of you guys probably don't know who I am, um, I basically grew up here in California and um, our, didn't come for money. My parents, you know, we always rented, we never had a house, you know, it was always move, 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 mm -hmm. you know. And um, yeah, pretty much like grew up here, went to school here um, and Temple City, if you guys <laughs> know that place. Shout out to Temple City. Shout out to Temple City. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, grew up there and then just began my entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey um, once you know, my parents got divorced and we had a huge financial crisis basically. Yeah. And that really forced me, you know, there's a saying, um, you know, some entrepreneurs are born, some entrepreneurs are bred. So yeah. like, right. So like you become an entrepreneur out of necessity. That's really what I was, you know, I was forced into that. And here I am today, two years, two, two to three years later, really. I'm um, sharing my story. So you kind of had hit that low point with your situation and the people around you and that was the biggest kind of factor that wanted you or wanted you to kind of push more and try to get to that level of yeah, success. Yeah, exactly. Um, a huge part, like, I don't know, we discussed about mm -hmm. it before, but family is a huge thing, um, a driving factor for me and, um, you know, my mom and my sister, you know, we never had much, you know, watching my mom, like, struggle through finances and you know have to borrow money from friends and you know being in that position like of stress and you know it's she, she even had like heart surgery like wow. like like a year or two ago or like something like that um but seriously yeah like it was really a driving factor and pretty much yeah. that's why i'm like here today really just providing for family yeah. yeah yeah it's a good story but um i definitely think that we should talk a little bit more about, you know, what made you decide to pursue e-commerce of all the things out there, right? Yeah. Like, what what was the first business that you know stood out to you? How did you even discover internet marketing in general? Because that's not something that you yeah. get taught in school. Your yeah. parents probably didn't show you that. <laughs> Definitely you know, not, yeah. where where yeah. was this introduced to you, and you know, what made you want to pursue it? Yeah, exactly. Um, I didn't actually stumble upon e-commerce like at first. It yeah. was a lot of different things for me. Because, you know, especially for a lot of, like, starting off people like beginners, you know, they don't realize, like, which one they want to do. And a lot of people, like, try to pick and it doesn't work out or maybe it does. Um, for me, like, nothing worked out. Like, like seven straight businesses didn't work out wow. until, like, I hit e-com. So, like, it was real estate investing at 15. <laughs> That's, like, the probably worst choice you could probably take <laughs> i don't know like no man, money yeah. yeah maybe it's just me like yeah. but i thought it was a freaking fantastic idea like, like wholesaling yeah like i thought it was wholesaling yeah. dude that was like freaking i was like yeah let's <laughs> let's do that but like, it tanked no no results no results i couldn't sign papers yeah i was 15 i didn't know anything first thing failed but the hustle and the drive was yeah. there the so. hustle and the drive was there that's the point like the income vehicle doesn't matter as much as the drive and the mindset. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what you really do. It's really what the driving force is behind it. So yeah. that really kept me going and it never like made me sad. All right. It did suck, but it never made me like discouraged. Like be like, all right, fuck this. You know, I'm quitting. And with every one of those businesses that you pursued, you obviously learned a lesson exactly. from it. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, like from real estate investing and then yeah. it was uh, stocks, Timothy Sykes, shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, I like, saw this guy like traveling, like he's got yeah. like all the cars. I was like, dude, I want to be like that, you know? Yeah. So it was that for a little bit and then it was, you know, Forex and then it was, you know, 
trying to do all that stuff. So kind of like we talked about before, it's a little bit of that shiny object syndrome. Like you didn't go all the way into something. You would yeah. start something, maybe hit a roadblock along the way, and yeah. then just kind of bounced out to another opportunity. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, um, like I saw things that I thought were really attractive on the outside, but when I really like try to get into it, it didn't really work out for me because simply because I was too young. Mm. Like. Um, and a lot of barriers there and yeah. a lot of the people that are out there like watching this content are under 18 and yeah. like they might see that as something that is like really stopping them from getting started but I mean me and Vince are both examples of this like we both have had companies or just ventures that we wanted to pursue under the age of 18 and yeah. like it's a bunch of bullshit that you deal with doing that but you there's do. almost <laughs> always a way to like maneuver around yeah. it or at least have somebody help you along the way so you know just take this guy's story as an example of like even if you're freaking 14 and you really want to make money doing something yeah. you can figure it out but anyways bro back to what you were saying yeah and also like dude a major thing that just completely out of there but um when i was 14 or 15 i would love playing video games and <laughs> there's a huge market for like like if you're really good at it you can just like throw up your content on youtube and there's a huge market of people who are looking to like you know Go watch your content and like mm -hmm. engage with it because like a lot of like I was really good at Call of Duty like yeah. I was really good like I hit rank one in Black Ops two uh, and Master tier so like I was really good at it yeah. and like I kind of regret sometimes I think about it like I regret not recording content and putting it up on YouTube and yeah. seeing like what people could re would react like you know watch like watching me do whatever I do yeah um, but yeah it's just you guys can, there's so many opportunities now out there because of the internet and I think it's a lot easier it is now than it was like you know before absolutely and in 1980 1990 a 10 or 10, yeah, uh, a 14 year old <laughs> a young kid would really struggle with starting a business they would have to do a lemonade stand or yeah. something but it's very possible now but no you make a good point um about saying that there's a lot of outlets out there especially in the gaming space i was right there with you yeah. and even when i was a kid i was making money but it was like little money just doing little jobs yeah. but anyways enough about that i want to talk a little bit more about your current situation yeah. and kind of what you're up to now so um you've made a fair amount with dropshipping right this has kind of been the vehicle that's gotten you to where you're at yeah um, would you say that this is something that you want to focus on for the long term or where do you see your goals at uh, for the future with e-commerce yeah so there's a lot of um, pros and cons of dropshipping and um, it depends on your situation when you want to and when if you want to pursue it or not um, for me like right now I'm at that point where I've already um, like use pretty much all the pros of drop shipping. Now it's kind of becoming like a little bit on the con side. So let me explain more about that. Yeah. Um, basically, drop shipping is fantastic for people who have low cash, like low cash flow. Like they don't have any business experience. It's really good for teaching you skill sets that you need to grow, you know, businesses. It's really good for people who have basically no money, which is basically where I started off. With. Yeah. Right. Same. Like it, it, it allows you to pretty much learn like fundamentals of business and skill sets that you're going to be using for the rest of your freaking life with like limited costs like you don't have to develop any products you know like r d on a on a product is going to be like expensive man. like it takes at least like 15 grand like i would say like 10 to 15 grand for a good product even sometimes like my business partner is like yeah we developed this product we have no idea if it's going to work but 50 g's into it already yeah. like that's a lot of money though not a lot of people have it's a much bigger risk to pursue exactly. something like that and also the risk can come with a higher reward yeah. but for somebody just getting started yeah. out it's not necessarily the best but i want to hear a little bit more like about what you're saying about the cons because a lot of people out there like you said have not that much money but they want to pursue this but they might have something like holding them back like hey maybe i shouldn't do drop shipping so i kind of want to hear your perspective on like hey is it still worth doing like should people still want to pursue drop shipping yeah i think know? i honestly think that everybody should try drop shipping at least give it a shot if it's not for you there's a lot of people who you know try businesses like for me like i tried a lot of different businesses you know i did you know digital marketing agency i did you know seo i did you know stocks i did you know it, Investing in real estate, a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. But seeing if it works for you is a huge thing. So I would definitely say try it mm -hmm. and see if it works for you and if you like it. And also, like, you know, a lot of the cons come with, you know, scalability and, you know, right. what I was talking about earlier. Like, things for me personally, it's 
not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. And I don't think it, the goal is to be doing this for the rest of your life. It's like really a to vehicle to, to yeah, allow you to have more step opportunities. Up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because once you learn those skills, you got the money, right? And you got the, you know, hopefully connections and network. Mm -hmm. um, then you can get to the next level and be able to go for that eight to nine figure company. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And the thing is too, like I think that's the biggest thing that people should focus on. And I try to solidify this heavily when I talk about dropshipping and general stories in my videos is that it's sort of like an, a foot in the door to yeah, e-commerce. Exactly. Okay, if you meet anybody who's doing eight or nine figures with e-commerce, that's not what they're doing. They're not running general stores. There are people that make those numbers, <laughs> yeah. but that is not necessarily the mid majority of people. You know um, what I mean? Yeah, so crazy. it's like yeah. it's like the key is to start something, use that as your vehicle to make good money, gain the knowledge from there, and then just keep kind of building from that point. Yeah, exactly. So that's the phase that you're in now. You're sort of starting to step away from dropshipping and focus on building a brand. Yeah, exactly. Like building an actual product line that you can call your own it's trademark. It's protected. Basically, it makes it very, very hard for other people to kind of get into, you know, and compete with it. So that's where I'm at. Really, I've, I like the thing is like you most people who even if you have the money, like let's say, you know, you're currently working a job and you have the ten, fifteen thousand dollars to you know start a business in the e-com space. I wouldn't even recommend it because um, doing a dropship store teaches you so many skills that you will need to run a brand yeah like you will need those skills and like if you go ahead and put 10 15 grand into a product you probably won't execute it correctly right so mm -hmm. like most people like you know like now after you know me and you well, we've done a lot of things in dropshipping we've learned a lot of skills and we can go ahead and make that product right that's that. yeah exactly yeah. make your own product you know design that branding you know whatever right. it is design packaging you know ship it from china you know it's all stuff that we've already encountered and it's just you know on a different level right yeah that's definitely good information I want you to also kind of explain to the people a little bit more about maybe some advice for marketing these products um you me and you both really use Facebook ads <laughs> yeah. Facebook ads is the the holy savior in a lot of regards <laughs> <laughs> but there is some difficulties with Facebook ads you really only see on these social medias and on these YouTube channels the people that are like crushing it with Facebook ads yeah. but there is a lot of people out there that cannot make ads work. Yeah. And I want you to kind of share with me, you know, out of all the stories you've seen and the people that you've maybe worked with, what are some of like the biggest areas that you see people struggle with with ads, you know? Like, yeah, um, it's it's often, it's a, like a really often question I get asked um, whenever I, you know, meet people mm -hmm. and they always say like, hey, why are my ads not working? Like, you know, whether they're, you know, business owners, local business owners or they're e-com or whatever they are, is it's just like, I think problem is they don't test enough. That's probably the number one issue that I see. It's just they throw up an ad, they half write the copy, the link mm -hmm. is like either too short or it's too long or it's like out of place, it's hard to find. Yeah. Um, they don't even you know create the ad from the right place. Um, and it's just probably just not testing enough and seeing what works with that particular audience. Like, you know, I've had ads myself i'm guilty of this too like every uh, every time i run an ad i always think about what if i tested that extra ad that yeah. would convert Follow. yeah it's like <laughs> right it's like for me it's like always like you know what if i even think of it i'm testing it yeah. right so you never really know and there's so many situations where i've ran into that like personally and i've seen a lot of you know beginners do that where they don't test enough and they just say oh it doesn't work mm -hmm. um it's pretty much just all testing. Really. There's so many variables that go exactly, into it yeah. too. People see a YouTube video, maybe my video or another video out there and they see the strategies that I've used and that's worked for me and they're under the assumption that, okay, if I take this and just apply it, it's gonna yeah. work the first time yeah. or the first couple times because this guy said it will. But yeah. the reality of it is, is you have to take this information, you have to apply it, but ultimately continue testing and refining until you find what works for you. Exactly. I mean, that's kind of what I've seen to be true in a lot of cases. Yeah. So um, one thing I kind of want to ask too is like, in the journey of building your e-commerce store, your dropship store, what was some of like the biggest kind of struggles and pain points that you went through? Because um, there are a lot of people out there watching this video that are just starting, but I have subscribers too that are building these businesses and they run into issues every single day. So yeah. from somebody who's done it, done a generous amount of money with it, like tell me some of the stuff that you have ran into and how you kind of went past that. Are you talking about the e-com side or just everything together? I would say more specifically around the e-com side, you know, Got like it. the issues with suppliers or with payment processors or... Yeah, uh, <laughs> we were talking about AliExpress earlier. That's yeah. the, one of the one of the many problems that you encounter, but um, man, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, Facebook, like learning. It sh- you got one of your accounts shut down before. Yeah, right? <laughs> ad accounts getting shut down, yeah. policy violations, like learning what works, what doesn't work, mm-hmm. you know. Base targeting is a huge thing, especially after the Cambridge Analytical thing. And now I'm relearning what you can and can't target because like mm-hmm. half of them are gone. Yeah, like I'm like learning like, oh shit, like that's not the there anymore. Yeah, right. So uh, it's like constantly adapting to things. That's mm-hmm. another thing. Like you know, Facebook changes things all the time, and you got really like learn it and yeah, you know, reach out to people like Jordan and like yeah. see like, hey, are you seeing this in your ad account? Like you know, is that working? Is that not working? Um, with the oh, internet marketing space it's like you're saying everything is constantly changing and it it's is, like you can't it just is. rely on one type of method or one approach exactly. you need to constantly like i said before kind of be like rebuilding and analyzing what's working exactly yeah uh, i think most most of the problems that i ran into um they aren't that big of problems it just it is it, it, there's hurdles in your in your path mm-hmm. right path to building a successful dropship store right mm-hmm. it's, not anything catastrophic. Most of the things that you run into, uh, many, many people run into. Um, and it's, it's really a question of just reaching out to people or posting in a group, like, you know, and, or like commenting on a video and be like, hey, um, I'm running to this problem. Is anybody running to this problem or yeah. has run to this problem and could, you know, give me an answer? And most of the time, like 99.9% of the time, people have already managed that exact problem. And it's just like, hey, Boom, here you go, and that's exactly. it. Exactly, really. you can't be afraid to like admit your failures exactly. and what you're struggling with. Yeah. That's good, so now I kind of want to ask you a couple questions where my subscribers can get some like actionable information, right? Yeah. Like some real advice that they can take after this video and go out there and apply yeah. it. One of the biggest pain points that I see people kind of running into nowadays is with product research. Yeah. And I'm not asking you to like sit here and reveal everything that you do, but <laughs> I really am just curious about what are some of like the key things that you're looking for when you're finding these products to test? Because there's so many products out there. There's so many different ways to find yeah. products. What, what's the mindset that you go at when you're you know doing research on products to test? Got it, yeah. I have really either two things I'm looking for, uh, like two different categories of products. Either products that um, are going to be more evergreen and they are probably like sm- a smaller audience that would probably be you know attracted to that particular product, or like a big audience, like big product that like is, has mark- mass market appeal that mm-hmm. everybody you know can kind of use, like a phone charger. Yeah. Versus like. Uh, Legal Legends keychain, you yeah, know what we're yeah, talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that's it's it's completely different, but there's pros and cons of both. Um, I think for me personally, if you're starting out, I would look at products that you're passionate about. Like my good friend uh, Norman, he started his shout out to Norman. Shout out Norman. <laughs> but um, he started an outdoors niche because for his entire life, he was a Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, always camping, always outdoors, mm. and. He knows the pain points of people who are in that niche. You know, right. it gives you, you an advantage, audience, right? It gives you an advantage. You understand the audience, and you can pretty much guess what products will work. You just go on AliExpress, look at what products will work, mm-hmm. and um, that's how I found my first winning product. The mm-hmm. same method. Uh, I like video games. I like League of Legends. I end up selling League of Legends keychain. Um, but that's one of the way to find products, like something that you're passionate about, something that you understand. Second thing is looking for what other people are doing, um, and that is a whole nother ball game for sure. Because now you have to look at you know you know ad creatives and use softwares and mm-hmm. kind of you know there's a lot of softwares out there that um, we don't probably don't have time to get into today, but yeah. um, that give you access to what other people are doing and looking at products that have mass market appeal, um, or you can just scroll AliExpress and see like what you think is mass marketable mm-hmm. um, and usually solves a problem, you know, it's unique, never seen before, you know, that's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, so the biggest thing that I think that they can take away from that is just either finding products that you understand the audience in and you know that that group of people is gonna want, or if you can't find a group that you identify with, exactly, yeah. then just going out there and doing a lot of research on what is actually working yeah. and going off that. And the second approach is the one that I took because there wasn't really a niche that necessarily stood out to me. Yeah. So I was setting out to study all these top stores, see how they're creating their ads, see the type of products they're testing. And I've kind of built my framework around that. And if you can mesh the two of those yeah. things, that's when that's you're powerful. for huge success. That's powerful, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Like, if you're involved, I, I feel like at least one person 
every person is involved in within one niche like yeah. at least like for me it's gaming and gaming is huge yeah you know maybe norman's involved in outdoors or something like that it's just something that you probably have to look for because mm-hmm. like for me i never really thought of myself as a gamer right i just liked league of legends you know what i mean like i never thought of it as uh, that way but really thinking about what you're interested in and seeing like oh maybe like this person would want this you know and yeah. you know maybe that person's you and you would want that you know what i mean like for me like that's I would true. Like a keychain. That's true. You <laughs> could always identify with some type of audience. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I thought we talked about a lot of good stuff here. Um, I actually had one question that I wanted to ask you, kind of like before we wrap it up. It's a little more of a deep question. Yeah. I want to ask me. you, like, <laughs> what is your definition of like happiness so far in life? Like, what have you found to bring you fulfillment? Where have you really like been able to find? Because we talked about this earlier today. We were talking about how material things don't always bring that. And yeah. I don't know. I'm just curious to hear your perspective. Maybe other people would as well because Vince, you know, he has a car and the things that maybe a lot of people like dream about having. But the reality of it is like goes deeper than that. Like it's not like once you get a Lambo or once you get an apartment, you're like this ultimate bulletproof type of guy it goes yeah. deeper than that so i want to hear what you think about all this yeah it's kind of crazy we should have recorded everything we talked yeah, about yeah we had some great conversation really great conversation about yeah. this but um yeah like when i bought like my first supercar um it was a great feeling but it doesn't fulfill you past that first week um when i bought the lambo same thing it's like really exciting and then it's just not fulfilling um i think really um, for me personally and I think we both resonate with that is really um, helping our family because like our family struggled so much like watching that kind of struggle like like financial struggle and you know being there growing up to it and and kind of like experiencing everything with your family it's like that that for me was like a huge part of like my driving force yeah you know and after I got the car I was like yeah like I thought it would make me so happy I thought it would yeah. and it didn't it was it's great and all like I'm not complaining yeah. but it's just not what you expect it to be and for me like I found like oh um, instead of buying myself a car like before I bought my Lambo I bought my sister a car mm. like and uh, and that was for me more fulfilling than buying myself a Lambo wow and I think that a lot of people um, like have this pedestal of like you know material goods like yeah. i'll buy gucci slippers and i'll be like a baller or like I'll you know happy i'll be happy, happy i'll be pop bottles and i'll be happy or whatever yeah. right it's like it's not really the truth no it's not it's not and um i think half the struggle of you know being an entrepreneur is seeing past that and seeing you know true yourself you know maybe family isn't the most important thing to you maybe it's mm-hmm. something else mm-hmm. and that's really up to you and that's really finding yourself first before you define like what you know your wise are and you know yeah i truly think that's probably one of the most important things just in life in general and maybe not even as entrepreneurs even the people with jobs yeah, out there yeah, really everybody's trying to find a sense of fulfillment everybody wants to be happy so if you're able to find at an early age or even an older age yeah. what it is that makes you happy you can end up living a life that you know ultimately you feel fulfilled with exactly. but anyways man we talked about some good stuff it was good having you on here <laughs> and uh yeah uh i'm probably gonna throw some clips in this video we're about to go drive the lambo that'll be a lot of fun but um vince man thanks for coming out and Pleasure. uh it's it's always good to have you here so any last words you want to give to the people maybe share them with your youtube channel tell them what you plan on doing with that yeah so um me and jordan we were just talking about it. i'm like yeah i should probably share my story a lot more because i feel like i impact a lot of people with you know just the specifics and mm-hmm. you know obviously we don't have time for that today but um, yeah, I'll be sharing a lot of that on my YouTube channel. I kind of don't have a lot of content or any content on there. This is just a video of me explaining how It's a good video still. You should go watch it. I'll link it down below. Yeah. He basically shares like the whole story about how he bought his first uh, car. And it's something that would be motivational to you guys. But um, yeah, so like you say, you're just going to be posting content yeah, about... Yeah. I want to definitely post a lot more content. You know, obviously, you know, Facebook ads probably going to be a lot of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know motivational yeah the slash. process of branding and all this yeah things. like yeah a lot, a lot just a lot of stuff um yeah. and if you guys are interested in that just hit me up start and, yeah uh, <laughs> you'll see the everything pretty much unfold cool well hey guys go check him out down below um like i said we'll probably throw some other clips in this video but thank you guys for watching if you got any enjoyment out of this video give me a thumbs up and also in the comments i want you guys to answer the question that i asked vince at the end of the video i want you to share with me what it is that you're striving for in life 
Is it a Lamborghini? Is it a mansion? Is it just to be able to put food on the family for your table? I don't know, you tell me. I wanna know and I'll be replying to some of you guys in the comments down below as well. So thanks so much for watching. That's all we have for this one and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you go check out this boy Vince, all right? Peace.